All right, you're being recorded now. Um, OK, and everyone can see the screen, so I'm going to do a little nuts and bolts stuff first at the front end of the meeting, um, and then we'll introduce the project team and then we'll get going into the content. Um, OK, so thank you everyone for joining us tonight for 90 minutes of your evening. Um, this is a municipality of Anchorage project for 120th Avenue upgrades. This is the first open house. Um, you can probably you can basically refer to this as the project launch. The project is just getting going. OK, my name is Holly Spoth Torres. I'm a local landscape architect and a public involvement specialist, and I do a lot of projects that have both landscape architecture and public involvement. Um, what we're going to do tonight, welcome you're all here, um, sign in. We're going to go through meeting procedures and etiquette, introductions. We're going to go through a project, project presentation, and then we're going to have time where we get to have two way communication between us and you, where you get to ask questions, um, we answer them, and then you tell us any more information you want us to know. And then we're going to tell you what's going to happen from here on out. OK, so I just you know, it's typical when you go to a public meeting that you sign in and um, this kind of platform makes it a little challenging to do that. But I just wanted you to all know that. Um, um, this Microsoft team platforms has I have the ability to download an attendance list, so um, we'll have your contact information by downloading the attendance list. Um, hold on, I'm letting one more person in. Um, for those of you on the phone, um, if you would like to send us your contact information, that would be that would be helpful. Um, you can put it in the chat box or you can email it directly to me if um, if you don't want to put your email in the chat box and Michelle will type a link that has my email directly that you can click and send anything you want to me. OK, so. I guess another nuts and bolts um, item. So we're going to go through the meeting procedures and etiquettes now. Please, please keep your mic muted. That just helps keep the feedback down so that we can hear what's going on. Um, it helps for the meeting um, progress and speed to keep your camera turned off. Um, when when you're talking, I think it's it's great to have your camera turned on and I'm going to ask the municipal staff people to turn on their cameras too to introduce themselves. Um, but just so that we keep people's bandwidth um, moving quickly, it's helpful for the meeting speed to just keep cameras turned off. So that's why we asked that. Um, you will have the opportunity to ask questions, give your comments um, and interact back and forth and we're but I I would just respectfully ask for that to happen after we get through the presentation. So the chat window is available. It's the little like um, cloud bubble in your toolbar. Um, the chat window is available. If you want to get a question out there while you're thinking about it, please just put it in the chat box um, and Michelle will make sure we get to it. Um, um, and you can wait until the question answer period time to talk about those things too, OK? Um, again, keep in mind the meeting and the chat are being recorded. I guess one other thing to say too is in your platform, there's a raise your hand um, and I'll remind you, but when we do get to the question and answer session, if you raise your hand, I'll make sure we get to everybody um, in the right order. OK, so now I'm going to introduce the project team who's here. Um, and Melinda, if you're if you hold on, I'll let one more person in. This will and it's a telephone number, so I'm just going to it'll take me one minute to get them on board. Hello, who just joined us? Justin is now joining. Hi, Justin, thanks for joining. Um, are you at a place to see a computer? Uh, I tried using the online links and the QR yeah. code. Neither of them worked for me to tie into the meeting. OK, are you in front of a computer, though? Because we can send you the materials so that you can follow along. Yeah, that'd be great. What's the link? OK. Um, you Holly, can... it's now on the project website. So if people okay. go to, okay. I can 
um, 120th Avenue upgrades. Okay, so and it's go right there, on that front page. It's just on that front page. Okay, cool. But I can add it there as well. No, it's okay. All right, so if you right, go so to the project website, you can follow along with the presentation there. And if you could just make sure your phone is on mute, that would be helpful. Okay, all right, thank you for logistics. Um, okay, first I want to introduce Melinda Sue. She's the municipal project manager. Go ahead, Melinda. I'm sharing my camera. Hello, everybody. Good evening. I'm Melinda Tsu, project manager for this project. Happy to be here tonight and um, eager to hear what you all have to share. And we're here to listen and as we move forward on this project. So thanks. Julie, would you like to come off or not? Uh, yeah, that ain't happening. Camera's not happening. Uh, Julie Mackla, project administrator um, for the 120th project. Okay, Brandon, I know you're here too. If you want to come off, uh, come on camera, that would be great. But if not, that's okay too. Yeah, I don't have a camera on my setup, unfortunately, but this is uh, Brandon Telford. I'm going to be the lead design engineer for the project. And then we also have Brian. Go ahead, Brian. And you come off cam. You come on camera. I know you want to. I have. Yes, I'll come off camera. I'm uh, one of the uh, design engineers under Brandon. So um, whatever work Brandon doesn't want to do, he sends my way. So that's what I that's what I do. Um, so yep. Okay. And then we have two consultants on the team right now, which is myself, who I've already introduced, doing public involvement, and my colleague Michelle. Michelle, you gotta come. You gotta come on. Just wave. All right. Thank you very much. Um, all right. So I just want to talk about the timeline a little bit, where we are right now, so that you understand the context of the project timeline. Um, here we are, way down in the little left-hand corner here. It's project kickoff, fall 2020. And what we refer to this phase of the project as um, in Anchorage trans transportation projects is the concept report phase. And the concept report, report phase is the part of the project where we don't really know what's going to happen yet. Um, it's the part where we listen to the people who use the roadway. Um, we listen to neighbors and neighborhoods, and it, it's really just the listening phase of the project. And so the idea is, is that we have that concept report which identifies the major themes and the major issues along 120th Avenue. Um, and we present that to the Planning and Zoning Commission. And once that happens, um, then the design starts kicking off in um, the spring of 2021 um, through the summer of 2021. And as the municipality acquires capital funding, um, that's when construction will continue to happen. So road projects, unfortunately, they do take a long time to get from planning all the way through um, design and construction. So at this point, depending on funding, you're looking at construction in likely 2023 or 2024. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. So project location. Um, right now, the project location is 120th Avenue between. Hold on, I'm letting one more person in between Johns Road and Old Seward Highway. Um, 120th is classified as a neighborhood collector. The right of way is 60 feet. OK. Um, it's been a primary priority of your community council for years and years. And I'm just going to go through the project purpose and need and why why the municipality is is moving this project forward. It's an existing strip paved road um, and the drainage, street lighting, ped faci pedestrian facilities are inadequate. There's no sidewalks. There's no places for people to ride bikes or walk. Um, and we'll get to this a little bit later, but it doesn't meet the municipality of Anchorage standards for a neighborhood collector. 
Um, there's lots of people who live along 120th Avenue and in the neighborhood um, and pedestrian use and vehicular traffic is increasing and such the roadway doesn't meet the need of the people who are using it now. Um, so the project will consider constructing missing pedestrian facilities um, and upgrade this neighborhood collector road to the to the standards in the design criteria manual. Um, the Ocean View Elementary School is a major driver of that. It's important for kids to have a safe place to travel. Um, so improvements could include a new road base and pavement, storm drains, sidewalks and bike facilities, and street street lighting. And like I said, as we get through this process and hear what you have to say about what you think, these are the sorts of things we will be considering. OK, I want to talk a little bit about the conditions that we've seen so far. Um, missing or discontinuous pedestrian facilities. There's limited right away. That's something important to remember. 60 feet. There isn't any street lighting. Um, there's railroad tracks, as you all know, which are will be an interesting design challenge. There's railroad tracks, elementary school, um, and there's a mix of high density residential housing, industry, commercial and business. And as you move through the corridor, there's just some pictures that we've seen, you know, that the sidewalks don't connect to 120th from Old Seward Highway. Um, pedestrians have to walk in the street um, with the increased traffic. The railroad intersects right here near South Gamble. There's um, poor visibility at some of the, the side street intersections. Um, here where the cemetery is, there's access onto the road. Um, and again, there's multifamily housing here, and that's, as you all know, that sits a little bit below grade. Um, there's a picture of it right here. So the roadway is higher than the housing. Um, access to the schoolyard happens mid block here, which is interesting. Um, there's not a safe crossing identified there. There is a safe crossing here, but it doesn't lead to any pedestrian facilities. And then again, sidewalks are discontinuous at 120th. Um, yeah, and that's just a brief summary of existing conditions. So I'm showing this because not because we're saying this is what's going to happen, but I want everybody to understand what the typical section for a neighborhood collector is. So when I say um, municipal standards for for a neighborhood collector, that's what this is. That's what can happen. So it includes um, two travel lanes that are 10 to 11 feet wide, um, a bike lane on either side of the road. And, and here it could be called a bike lane or a shoulder. So a bike lane or shoulder, that's five feet. Then there's seven feet of separation um, between the curb and a pedestrian facility and it could be a five foot sidewalk or eight wood eight foot pathway on either side one side or two sides those are the kind of things we want to hear from you about also street lighting so when we talk about a typical cross section um, that are the guidelines for a, for the design for a neighborhood collector these are the sorts of things um, that we're talking about, OK? So we're almost getting to the point where we where we talk back and forth. We're almost there. Um, again, I just want to remind you this is the concept rep report phase. This means this is the point where we're listening and collecting feedback, OK? Um, again, the engineers, they, they don't have preconceived notions about what they want to do. Um, they want to hear what you think so that they understand where to invest the design time and energy. What studies do they need to do? What investigations do they need to do? OK. Um, another goal, improve 120 to be a complete street. And I, a complete street is some it's a it's kind of like a a planning, a transportation planning term. And what that means is that um, it's a roadway that's improved for all users and all modes of transportation. So um, understanding that a street isn't just for pedestrians, it isn't just for cars, but it's for everybody who needs to use it to move about the city. So a goal is 
to um, build a more complete street. Consider constructing missing pedestrian facilities. And again, I just want to say this has been the highest priority for Old Seward Ocean View Community Council. OK. So. Um, I'm going to let municipal staff um, weigh in with anything I may have missed before we get in here, but. Um, yeah, why don't I do that? Melinda or Julie or Brandon or Brian, do you have anything you'd like to add before we dive into collecting some input? No, uh, yes. Melinda first and then Julie. Oh, OK. Um, let's see, I'm just going to give you guys a money update because I know that's always interesting to folks. So it's like how much money is this project funded with currently? So I looked that up just so I can share. We have about one point two million dollars currently um, to proceed with the design work. Um, and if there's leftover money, you know, that could be used towards um, actual construction. Right now, the capital improvement program has identified three point six million dollars in 2023 and another $3.6 million Justin in 2024. Is now exiting. Um, but really, we don't know what the project's gonna cost, and that's where we just begin the process of uh, concept phase and start developing as we move towards a design study report and looking at the alternatives and what they're gonna cost and we come up with a preferred alternative, you know, and then we um, start working on those engineering estimates. So that's all I, I can think of for now. OK, thank you. Kelly. Um, anything else, Julie? No, I think Melinda summed it up. We uh, really want to hear from uh, the attendants, see what some of their thoughts are. OK, all right, um, Nancy, I know you have your hand up. I'm going to get to you in a second. Hold on um, one. Just one second. I just want to OK, so what I'm going to do here. I want you to be able to. Huh, ask questions. Um, give us comments. Um, so we have another map here and as you give us very place based or site specific comments, um, I will mark up the map just like we would at an open house meeting. If we need additional resources to like explain what you're talking about. I have a variety of tools, um, Google Maps that we can pull up and and look look at. OK, so um, I'm going to try to make this as interactive as we can, trying to pretend like we're at a public meeting around a table. All right. Um, the first person to have your hand up is Nancy and go ahead, Nancy. Thank you. I'm sorry. Someone left the meeting and I couldn't hear what the funding was in 2024 and I'm going to report that to the community council. So, oh, looks like someone just replied. OK, and just one comment. I have to leave at six, but I really encourage everybody to go to that interactive map and put the icons in all the concern areas or feedback areas. That was really awesome tool. And I just encourage everybody to go do that. And I'm done. Thank you. It's a great meeting so far. Good. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'm going to respond. Hold on. I have someone else. I'm going to respond by saying that we're going to go through this exercise here. But what Nancy talked about, yeah, is that there's an interactive um, web app on the website. And I'm going to show everybody how to do how to use it when we're done talking here um, so that everybody else will have that opportunity too. So thanks for bringing that up, Nancy. OK, so I guess diving in, are there any other questions? Does anybody want to tell me anything? Um, I, it's like the first pancake, right? Like it's always hard to go first, but. Um, I know somebody wants to say something. Right. Aaron. Oh, thanks, first of all, for having this meeting virtual. This is it seems to be working really well, and I appreciate all the work that went into putting it together. Um, I, I completed the survey, and one of the comments that I posted, um, but I'm just curious if it's even on the board, on the table to discuss, is the uh, the railroad crossing. Um, if you guys can give some thoughts on what your, well, provide some insight into what your in initial thoughts are. And um, there's one of my survey responses where 
routinely, almost every day, I'm having to go around that or go all the way to Diamond Road or um, somewhere far away from my house just to get the two minutes to my house. I live on Pettis, Pettis Road, and um, I doubt we can build a bridge or a tunnel there or something, but um, for our neighborhood, that's a constant um, blockage because we have we have um, two roads that the railroads cross and that usually the same train will be blocking both of theirs for those for at times 30 to 30 minutes to an hour and that's nothing that you guys can control but i'm curious if there's anything that you're thinking about to help mitigate that impact um julie you came off mute would you like to respond yes so one of the things we will be doing is we will have an agency scoping meeting um, most importantly with the railroad and the school they're the two big um, agencies that will be um, interacting with i do not believe we will be doing a grade separated crossing so a bridge or anything like that so is the blockage is from when the railroad um has to they're dumping at asng correct and it, yeah and they they pull forward and park for a while and then they pull backwards and it's just this uh, constant block and it's almost on a daily basis um and it, like i said it can be but 10 minutes or it can be 45 minutes that you're stuck there and you have to go all the way to diamond to get home at times that's the yeah. only place that you can get under the railroad um we will probably look at that as part of our traffic analysis but there is a potential that there's not going to be much we can do with that because i don't believe a grade separated crossing is a possibility here yeah, that, that's kind of what I assumed just to the cost of it, but thanks for um, capturing my comment. Thank you very much. Um, OK, who else? This, this is John. I'm on the phone. OK, hi, John. So Go ahead. It, so in the scope of this project, there's a section of 120th that doesn't have city water or sewer on it. Is there any talk about carrying city water and sewer all the way down 120th from, say, the old sewer to John's Road? Um, go ahead, Julie. Um, I don't believe we were aware of the water issue, but that's something to um, bring up. And that's one of the other things that we can talk about with the agencies is lack of water and, or sewer. John, it, would, it would be not. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go first. It would be very nice to have it. The water in the area is not great. Uh, and if we could get city water in there, it would be nice. It'd be a nice little benefit to increase property values. Yes, typically during the design, we will contact AWU and say there's a interest potentially from the property owners and they can um, do their evaluation about extending services or sometimes facilities need to be upgraded or pressure loops need to be um, upgraded. And so that's a possibility. We do like to, as a project team, since typically these facilities go in the roadway, we don't want AWU coming back in the very near future and digging up our road. So we'll try to coordinate now. So I guess my question to you, John, is, is can um, what section uh, and municipal staff might know this, but I'm digging in a little bit more. Um, what section don't doesn't have water and sewer? Can you so describe I'm, that? I'm at seven. I'm at 710 East 120th. And I believe from the railroad tracks down to maybe the high density housing is where there is no city water where all the uh, townhouses and such I'm guessing they're all on city water okay yeah I'm thinking it's here hello so Holly it's Melinda okay you know we, as Julie said we will reach out to DOT or not well DOT but uh AWW and talk about and find out if there was past interest um from the property owners. Usually what they have to do is express interest and then form like a, a, a water improvement district or a sewer improvement district. Um, the only other way for a water line, for example, to be extended if it's not expressed 
um, by the community and, and, and a district formed is if AWWU has plans for, say, a water transmission line or a uh, modification to one of their pressure zones as far as um, extending. But sometimes they do if they look for an opportunity and say, hey, this would be another opportunity for AW, AWWU to have you know, um, another feed within the system. Sometimes it is something that they're willing to advance a project without uh, forming a water improvement district. But um, that's just something I wanted to share as far as a little background on formation of, of extending a service, not just a service, but uh, a main, a main extension. But we will be reaching out so it's good to hear from you guys. All right, um, anybody else? Keep it coming. Um, I guess, I guess I'm assuming a lot of you have taken the survey, so um, you've put your comments in there, but I guess I want to hear what anybody thinks about speeding or, or sidewalks or so, bike lanes or. This, um, this is John again. Go I can ahead, give you John. some opinions on, on that from my okay. my observations. Speeding we'll do John and then we'll can, go to Don. Okay. Speeding can be an issue. Uh, so some people get the whipping through there. The other uh, uh, issue is there's some trucks coming in and out of the landscaping company. They've widened their driveway, so now they're turning out towards Old Seward, which has been nice. Um, on the sidewalk side of things, the north side of 120th all the way down to the school is bordering the cemetery on the south side it's bordering houses mm -hmm. and those are not huge lots anyway and if you start putting sidewalks and bike paths and everything you're really going to crowd that side of the road so my vote would be sidewalks and bike path on the north side of the road The north side or the south Hi, side? The north, north side. side. Okay. Um, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to Donovan first, and then Luke and Ryan after that. So Donovan first. If Steve, if you want to go, get yourself in the queue. But Donovan first. Hey, uh, Donovan uh, Camp here uh, by Anchorage, and. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the non motorized draft plan for Anchorage, uh, the new one. And yeah, this would be a good potential for a low stress corridor um, for biking. Um, you know, there, there's some higher demand I see on their on their maps in this area, kind of getting to the malls uh, on the right uh, to the uh, east of 120th. And it's also already uh, some good connection here in the network uh, with the school. So I guess I'm just stressing more low stress corridors um, or choosing this to be more low stress corridor by adding uh, traffic calming uh, systematically as opposed to waiting for it to uh, any of the speeding issues to become more of a issue and deterring cycling in this area or non motorized activity. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, just some of the other routes around the railroad are quite far in a distance, so this would be a very strategic route to have a low stress corridor. And that's all. Can I just, can you describe a little bit more what a low stress corridor is? Oh, what a low stress I just I just want everybody to under everybody on the Can call to understand me? what that means a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Can we'll move on. um oh sorry, can you can you hear me? We can now, but I couldn't before. Oh I'm sorry. My connection okay. must be Yeah. Um a low stress corridor uh is uh, it's a corridor that allows all ability user cyclists to use um, bike lanes on any that would be bike lanes on anything uh, less than 20 mile an hour roads. So this one would need some sort of protection or separation 
Um, it's dedicated to cycling, so not just a pathway for uh, multi-use. Um, or it can be traffic calmed uh, with speed bumps or things of the like. Um, so it just has to do with the ADT volumes um, in along this corridor and also the speed. So if we were able to implement traffic calming and, and maybe bring down those ADTs, uh, ADTs, uh, the, tra the amount of traffic on the road, uh, it would help this become uh, a good part of the biking network. And, uh, and I think there's a need for it in this area. Per the uh, Anchorage non-motorized uh, plan draft. Okay. Um, so we'll go to go Luke next. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. So I think I went on the map and put some comments. He is I'm not now sure joining. If, Perfect. If they, um, they did that, but I think uh, I think these improvements are really going to be a good thing. Um, especially for pedestrians. Uh, one other thing with the train, um, when they redid the bus routes, the, the bus on John's road, the bus stops on John's road were removed and pushed to the other side of the train tracks. So people have to walk across there to get to the transit stops. Um, so mm -hmm. just a note on, on that. And also, you know, this road is actually a pretty, well-traveled by, uh, you know, kids and kind of preteens before they drive, they're, they're going to the Huffman business area from these neighborhoods. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, um, especially in the winter, this is a really narrow road with really tight uh, restrictions. There's, there's no sidewalks. And especially when the snow is piled up, it, it's pretty dark and dangerous. And there's, uh, there's kids walking out there. And I think it's uh, important that we do provide sidewalks at least on one side um, and uh, hopefully separated sidewalks. It would be nice. Uh, I do get the concern that it might crowd, but uh, my concern is that I think my preference would be sidewalk on the south side of the street because that's where all of the people are walking to and from to, uh, to prevent any uh, crossing that doesn't need to happen and, and safety concerns in that respect, uh, especially with the schools. Um, and then at both ends, you know, sometimes, especially going on to old Seward, that's a 45 mile an hour, you know, two lane road in each direction. And, you know, if someone's turning left from 120th onto old Seward, you can, you can have wait times pretty long in some, in some high, um, in peak hours. And so potentially maybe looking at putting a left and a right turn lane, uh, at least on that side, I think would be a good idea. Um, I would like to see uh, lighting improvements, especially at the railroad crossing and some tree clearing right there at the railroad crossing west of the, there by the, um, the cemetery. Those trees encroach uh, into the roadway right now. So, so cars kind of swing out across the center line to avoid the trees. Um, I've noticed drainage issues at the at the bottom of the hill for the video village. They're just a uh, ponding at all times um, of year on the south side of the road. Over here, like wait, video village. You said uh, yeah. So just east of the railroad crossing on the south side of the road. Oh, over um, here. Yeah, basically right at the intersection with Gamble. It's the okay. red building. Yeah, the red, big red building. Okay. I'm going to say. Okay. And, um, yeah, I know that there's kind of, you know, we have constricted area and not very much room. Um, the the questionnaire said there may be some purchase of right away. I'm kind of curious on on what you were were thinking there. Would that be you think purchased further to the north, or um, 
taking right away from some of those uh, residential houses. I and, think, uh, yeah, I think I think the intent is to not. Um, well, that's like the last thing. I think the intent is to figure out what kind of improvements we want to see first before, you know, and we like to just gauge on the in the beginning. So, yeah. And I think the last thing is just the the school crossings um, mm -hmm. at both ends of the road, actually at the Ocean View School and at Old Seward. Those those intersections are pretty steep. Um, they're not extremely steep, but they're steep enough in the winter that cars kind of can get going fast and slide through the crosswalk a little bit. Um, so it's, it's kind of I got, I got kids that walk to school at Ocean View, and I'm always a little bit leery about that crossing uh at john's and um and 120th just because that uh it's, it seems to be a little bit um sketchy at times okay so right. that was my comments I, you, I go ahead melinda um could you explain that one more time i really kind of want to digest that is that from both directions on john's road or coming on to 120th that cars are experiencing that steep transition? I think or is it's it just, just the east or west, westbound vehicles on 120th connecting, okay. connecting to John's. Okay. Uh, I think that there is a, there's a lot of conditions there. It might be sight distance issues and other things, but it seems a little constrained. And I just noticed people kind of creep into that crosswalk quite a, quite a bit. And sometimes it's, you know they're moving pretty quick before they get actually stopped and um it's something that i think you know if we adjusted that grade a little bit with a nice a flatter landing mm -hmm. and maybe improve that crosswalk somehow um I don't, i'm not really sure what the the way to do it would be but it's for the especially the kids coming into that area from that ocean point um, right now, there's a, a mid-block crosswalk that I think I would right. like to see go away, and some type of thing be improved on the, at the at the crosswalk at the Johns Road intersection to kind of funnel people more to a a larger, more open, more visible space that um, that could be a little safer. Those are really good comments. Thank you for sharing, everybody. Thanks, Luke. Okay, we're gonna go to Ryan next. Yeah, hi, thanks. I'm on in the Ocean Point subdivision on Tidepool. It's the second street from Division on the east side. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to share a couple of things that I've told Holly. Uh, a couple of years ago during the winter, a car came off a really sharp angle from 120th and took out the front corner of my house. And uh, so that was unfortunate. And then this summer, somebody turned trying to go down tide pool obviously those are all dead ends off of 120th and went over the retaining wall and got stuck so i don't know if curbs or sidewalks would have helped prevent any of that but it's my hope that you know i understand space is limited if a sidewalk can't be accommodated a minimum maybe a curb can be put in and then kind of along that with the uh, space being limited, you know, I understand, you know, last resort would be to purchase re right away. Uh, my property is right up against there, as are many of them. I don't think there's more than five to ten feet on our property, so I don't I don't think that's even an option. Just so just a thought there. Um, and then I just heard one of the last people talk about the turning north onto Old Seward. And I concur with that. It's a pain waiting for people to try and turn left. So if there's room, getting dedicated turn lanes would be great. Um, here, right? Uh, yeah, the yep. uh, old sword. So just concur with what was previously said there. And then uh, my preference, just not necessarily as a homeowner, but as a driver, is that bikes are on the sidewalk. So if you're going to do that, make it a pathway. But that's just my personal preference. Not having them with the cars. So that's those are my comments.
um, Adobe creates these funny little descriptions of what we're looking at. <laughs> and I'm sorry it's doing that. OK, thank you, Ryan, for those comments very much. Um, yes. I'm, I'll probably include the picture that you sent me of the car in yeah. your house in the report. So <laughs> if that's OK. Um, OK. That was from this summer. If I find the other one, I'll send it to you. OK, that sounds great. Thank you. Yep, um, We'll go to Nancy first and then Aaron. Hi, I'll make it real quick. It's kind of um, um, promoting the same um, points that others have made, but um, on the 120th and Old Seward intersection, great idea for a turn right lane or whatever. But, you know, um, just to the very north of 120th is a coffee stand, and people are in the turn lane to turn on to 120th, but they're also in the turn lane to turn into the coffee place. And then they're also turning right out of the coffee place and trying to turn right onto 120th. And this is a very hazardous situation there with people that are actually in the turn lane trying to get onto the street and um, connecting with people that are trying to turn in and out of the coffee stand. It's dangerous. Um, anyway, so take a look at that. Um, also, um, like the 120th and John's um, stop sign is on a downhill grade, and so people just slide right through it or run it all together. But there is a school district's um, crosswalk right there, and perhaps maybe I put this on the interactive map, but maybe one of those speed humps before you get to the crosswalk that they kind of have in the strawberry raspberry area where people have to slow down. It's not at like a real high speed hump or speed bump. It's a hump that makes people slow down. Um, and then I was wondering um, what the current traffic count is on 120th, if you have that. Um, I'm going to have to defer to Brandon, maybe. OK, I mean, it's thousands of cars He's now here. exiting. No, it's okay. I think one of the team members might have the answer. Let's just see. Okay. If one, um, does, and then one of the, just one more thing. We had an airplane crash at the railroad tracks a couple of years ago. So uh, that whole railroad track corridor right there and American landscaping area is in a flight path for landing and takeoff at the airport. Okay. What, what, si what size of an airplane? Uh, just a passenger, you know, two person passenger plane. OK, there's an um, airport. Holly, this is Julie. There's an airport just south of here uh, oh. along the railroad tracks in Ocean View. Yeah, right. OK, I do know that one. Thank you. OK, and that's all. But thank you very much for answering questions. Yeah, thanks, Mike Finster. It's Flying Crown Airstrip. Yeah. So there's air traffic going over as well. Not that that will affect anything, but there was a plane crash right there at the site, so. Okay. So Julie, to answer, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I want to answer the question about traffic count. I don't think we have the most up to date traffic count. We will be doing a full traffic analysis. And so part of the comments that we're getting here today is we'll be shaping the scope of work for the consultant to look at some of these specific comments that you guys are pointing out. So that's really great when you're giving us specific things to look at. Um, so we will get an updated traffic count um, when we do the traffic analysis. And that'll be incorporated into the design study report. All right, OK, I'm looking at the chat now, so I see the queue. Um, we're going to do um, Aaron and then Michael and then Steve. So go ahead, Aaron. Thanks for the additional opportunity. Um, just one comment that my wife and I have thought about frequently um, that's come up is the intersection with Old Seward Highway. There are frequent car accidents occurring there, long wait times. Um, and my my personal opinion that a one directional turn turning south onto the Old Seward Highway being the only option would be probably the safest and most, um, yeah, Probably the safest scenario since there is a controlled intersection just up the road at um, what is it? Um, Clat, excuse me, thanks, um, where you have a light controlled intersection. So that's an alternative to what was proposed kind of 
And then um, just elaborating on the lighting, I think the plan right now, lighting is needed up and down the entire thing. I, I run on this road frequently to get to hillside, mid hillside. Um, and right now it's dark already when I'm running and it's, I'm running in the dark and cars can't see me. Um, and tied to that, um, I have a hard time saying this because I'm in the natural resource conservation field, but the, uh, the north side of the road past the airstrip and the, between the airstrip or the railroad and the school is completely covered in trees um, and it's really dense. Um, the frequently moose are lingering in there. I've had some near misses um, with wildlife come emerging from those in the morning and in the, in the evenings. Um, and I, I, I have a, a trailer with a boat on it. And when I do, I have to, as somebody stated earlier, I have to move and drive somewhat down the middle of the road to not run into the trees. And I think if, if nothing happened on this road except some brushing, um, that would be a positive move just to uh, make some room for people to spread out a little bit so as a minimum and then and then one last piece would be the the barricades at the railroad crossing um, they make this really strange kind of cockeyed um, shift they change the angle of the 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 as you're driving at them they're like almost pointed into the lanes um, to force you to change your direction at like at the railroad and, I just, it's a it's not a very safe thing for drivers um, certainly if you're sliding through there and when you're pulling a trailer it's really um, kind of a pain in the side so um, that's it thank you okay. holly this is julie yeah i think um it We're sounds like the Sorry, go ahead, Julie, and then we'll get to the other people. Thanks. It sounds like the trees are currently encroaching into the right of way and is a hazard right now. That's something um, tomorrow we can bring up to street maintenance to see if the trees can be cleared back in the right of way. If that would, that's a temporary fix, we can look at more permanent too. That would be fantastic. Thank you for just bringing that up because, yeah, we don't have to wait two years, three years for this project to be done to do that. Thank you. Yeah, the trees sound like it's a more immediate need um, and it's a typical street maintenance um, task. OK, we'll go to Michael next. Thank you for waiting. Not a problem. Thank you for this. Um, a couple of things just to reiterate. I agree the north side there with the brush and stuff uh, when I usually bicycle there more than anything else. And particularly in the spring, the snow piles on the north side seem to be a lot larger than on the south side. I don't see that improving whether or not they brush it, but I think that's going to be the thing that's going to help you determine that a south side um, sidewalk would be a better alternative unless they find a way to store snow that's better than what they have now. Um, also agreeing with uh, Aaron on the crossing at the railroad, as a bicyclist, I'm literally squeezed in to the traffic and I get, um, shall I say, some nasty comments for biking on the road there, um, even though that's the only place I've got to go as a bicyclist. Um, so that needs to be changed and if nothing, if anything else, widened rather than narrowed going across the railroad tracks. Um, the third place that I've had a lot of trouble as both a pedestrian and a bicyclist, as Nancy brought up, is at the uh, coffee shop. Uh, people are coming out of the coffee shop, um, trying to balance their coffee and their cell phone, and then, oh my God, they're actually driving at the same time with bicyclists and pedestrians at an intersection. And it's, I've literally had to jump out of the way before as a pedestrian standing at the corner waiting to cross. Um, that has got to be changed, maybe even not allowing the access closest to the intersection for the coffee shop. I don't know of any other way to get around that. Um, in that regard, then, what Aaron said about having only a right turn from 120th going south on Seward Highway and not allowing people to turn left there, I think is a great idea. They would just have to go to the roundabout and circle back around to go left. Um, and I think that's going to improve. And I think that is a type of traffic control we're going to need to see more of in Anchorage in general. Um, the last thing, um, all of these things have been covered while I was waiting to talk. Um, the, the grade at the crossing by the school is a big concern. I've seen many people, again, they're talking on their cell phone, they're 
playing with their coffee, they're not paying attention, and then they slide into the intersection. I'm glad no kids have been injured seriously there, but it's a uh, severe accident waiting to happen, and they have to do some grading, um, maybe more signage, uh, maybe additional, uh, what do you call that, high uh, friction material there. Uh, yeah. really a good idea at that intersection because there are kids there, and that is fortunately a neighborhood where kids can walk to school uh, that is really advantageous, but it's going to take one accident that's going to be taken care of. Did I go too fast? No, I think I got lots of it. Um, I, I'm just going to concur um, with your statement here. That sounds fine. I think I got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Steve, you're next. Thank you for being so patient. Oh, great. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, good. I'll start at John's it's a, for your own um, safety there, Holly. Uh, John's Road, yes, the grade sliding into John's Road from 120th can be an issue. Uh, currently, the map that you show doesn't have the uh, condominiums. I think they've been placed a little bit set back and they've taken down the south side of the road. The north side is on ASD property as part of their um, kindergarten playgrounds, I believe. Uh, maybe that can be talked with ASD and see if that can be chiseled down a little bit. Uh, some of their vegetation, rose bushes, et cetera, may be hampering line of sight uh, on the north side of the Johns 120th. Um, moving down just a little bit farther, the turn in for the um, ASD, I think they just use it as their uh, lunch delivery area where they have where they store their dumpsters. I'm wondering if that could be turned into more of a bus uh, pickup instead of on the front exit of the playground. Uh, if you've ever tried to get on or out of John's Road, including uh, EMT folks, uh, when school is let out, it's it's a it's a traffic jam. It's a bottleneck. Fire can't get through unless they jump the curb. So you may want to talk about ASD as a as a different um, bus pickup, maybe on the uh, south side of their school. Uh, currently they have a, a reload in through there, which are movable, maybe take off a little bit of their playground and they extend a, a bus pickup in that regard. Just okay. a thought. Can you explain that one more time? I think I'm not understanding what the issue is. What's the issue you're trying to get at with the school? Um, is it? Jo John's Road is a bottleneck at pickup and drop off times for school okay. for the kids. Okay. okay. Um, People cannot turn left off of John, uh, 120th to get onto John's. They can't turn right to get off of 120th to get onto John's. Um, coming through John's north or south, is, it's, a, it's a traffic hazard. Um, I mentioned this uh, more than a few years ago, and um, that the principal just kind of threw up their hands and said, that's what we got. So, you know, maybe there's some solutions for pickup, especially at the bus areas. OK, uh, um, they may want to they may want to move the reload and move their fence line in so that you can extend a longer uh, pickup area for either parents or buses. For school okay. buses to pick up. OK, I got it. And actually, that's one thing that a traffic analysis will really dive into when we do that. So thank you for bringing that up. OK, go yeah, move on. Yeah, the line. Of, now. Thanks. I just uh, thank moving you. down. Oh, go ahead. No. <laughs> OK, moving down a little bit farther. Yeah, the um, the on the north side, we've turned in multiple things to the street maintenance to have those trees cut down and taken care of um, since I've been uh, following this. That's been eight years and I think they did it once, but I think eight years growth has come back to haunt us a little bit. I think they can do a little better job of uh, maintaining that in a, in a conscientious way instead of the homeowners or the councils getting involved with that. That's just an aside on my behalf. Uh, drainage is a, is a big issue on some of those areas, especially for the people that live in those uh, condominiums. Um, I don't know where they're going to put their snow uh, when they plow out that. That's been a contentious issue since it was a dirt road and virtually nothing there. Uh, the, the drainage was still an issue. Which uh, the railroad crossing. Talking about, Steve? I'm talking on the south side. Okay. 
south um, looking at your map it's where the new ones uh, okay. off of the off of the new condominiums to okay. the east it starts right in through there I'd also like to see an ASD flashing light somewhere within there. And I don't know if there is one on 120th. I don't think there is, um, as there is on John as a crossing. I don't know what the state law is for how how far, how many they can have, but I don't think one enough, one is not enough on John's. They need one on 120th. Maybe starting at the end of the ASD property, at least it gives people a forewarning. Kids are here. You need to slow down. Um, that might be an indication that um, a traffic study might want to take a look at. And I'm not sure of the particulars on that. Okay. Thank you. Um, the railroad crossing. Uh, the railroad crossing has those dividers as a no blow. Um, it was given a federal grant within the municipality that's at uh, 32nd and Spinard, uh, it's not at at um, Clat because they needed a, a a bigger obstacle, which no obstacle, but they needed with their track their gravel travel, et cetera, going in and out. It is on Ocean View Drive. Uh, yeah, the design um, may prompt somebody to take a better look at it. We've had the one at Ocean View Drive and the one at 120th. I think it's been there probably 20 years. Uh, since it was initiated for through the federal grant, start blowing their horn. Uh, people are going to jump out of their beds. Uh, higher decibel and longer at each crossing. Uh, that's why it's really a, a nicety that we have that. Um, lighting along the entire area um, is definitely needed. Whether you put it on the north side or south side, it uh, doesn't much matter to my instance, but I think something has to happen. Uh, the gentleman that is the um, manager of the cemetery is a very open and uh, willing person to work with you. Uh, I'm not sure what what his um, stoppage is, but I think he needs to be contacted because um, along the railroad, the cemetery pays fees to the railroad to be able to use that. Yeah, I don't think we can. Yeah, I'm not sure on that. Okay. I I can concur wholeheartedly with the south exit at the old Seward crossing from 120th. Um, you take your life in hands if you're trying to turn north. I'm serious. It's just when the light changes at Clat going southbound, it's a one way all the way through um, the Huffman all the way to the Armin and Rabbit Creek. Uh, it's, it's almost impossible to get out of to turn northbound on a lot of those uh, side roads. Uh, so I would definitely take that was a very good suggestion a south exit only at that area. Okay. Um, the rest of the rest of my comments uh, uh, when you get a little more particular I'm sure you want to share them with our community council and contact me or Nancy or uh, in that regard. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Go and ahead. then uh, with this with this map when you get it all kind of cleaned up the way you want it. Uh, will it uh, be put on the website so people have an indicator that, oh, this suggestion was always done and they already been done and they don't have to duplicate? Yeah, although, I mean, we like to hear from lots of people, you know, even if it is duplicative, but um, we will clean this up a little bit so people can see. I mean, sometimes I like to leave it this messy, but no, we'll clean it up a little bit. Um, <laughs> it's better than stickies, I can tell you that. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Okay. So, yeah, Steve, this, we, as a, this is Ju Julie. We definitely like the duplicate well, comments. It really does help us. Um, pm and &E is the um, advocate for these projects, and we go to the different agencies. So we'd like to tell traffic or whoever we're talking to how many times we've heard this comment. So if we keep on hearing the same comment over and over, so we, we like the duplicate. So if you see when you're doing the interactive map, something's already been talking about, put it on there again. We'd like to hear if it's truly a problem. Yeah. Oh, definitely will. And uh, this will continue to be our number one priority. Uh, I'm the president of the community council and it has been since I've been there, which is uh, six years and will continue to be there until this thing gets solved and taken care of. Unknown uh, participant uh, a, is now joining. Go ahead, Steve. All right, and 
so with that in that regard um you can depend upon uh, our our administration to uh, currently to go ahead and make this still our number one priority as hopefully um, the new uh, representatives and senators, if there are any new ones, uh, join in and trying to allocate some monies for this. That's it. Um, okay, thank you, Michelle. Are there any specific questions I need to answer in the, that we need to get answered in the chat? I know that people are adding comments, and I love it because they will become part of the record. Um, but are there any specific questions? Uh, no, it was only comments. All right. So can you guess, share the website again for me, please? The website, please. Michelle, can you type the website in the? Oh, are you on a phone? Do you need it verbally or do you want it typed? I'm, I'm on a phone, but I'm in front of a computer now so I can get to it. OK, it is. Um, I always do it wrong. What is it, Michelle? Hold on. I, I can't I can put it in the okay. chat box. OK. I think he needs to hear it though, because he's on the phone. Yeah, I can tell right. you the 120th Avenue, but it's um, actually I'll just I'll it's one two zero T A A V E U P G R A D E S. So it's 120th Avenue upgrades, um, which I understand is a little challenging on the phone to understand, but um you can also send us an email if you need to and we can send you a direct link dot, dot com or dot org dot com, dot org or dot com. okay and just to clarify when it's it's uh, abbreviated avenue 120 120th av upgrades dot com thanks for catching that yep i can never remember it now I'm seeing it. OK, so I'm going to move us along here because I, I just want to give. I don't know. I want to do this. I want to give you a quick little tutorial and maybe you've all already done it already. But. Um, this is. I lost all you. OK, there you are. This is the web application if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and you can see people are populating and it tells you what to do. Welcome to the welcome to the interactive map. Um, you can see these instructions again if you accidentally hit OK and you can see these instructions again by hitting this little eye up here. OK. Um, once you use this attach, you can attach photo, provide valuable input. Um, OK, I'll let you read that. So what you do. As you click that little orange button at the bottom and then you have all these different opportunities here. Um, and so you click on the thing. And then you add it to the map. And then you get to say something about it. Um, I travel to a destination here, so there's all these different choices, but you can also add your own idea and then type in whatever you want. If you want to send us a picture too of what that could be, um, you can you can add a file um, and then add a picture. Oh look, there's pictures of us. <laughs> um, so that's how you do it. And like Julie said, it's really important. It doesn't matter if somebody else has already said something. Um, and you can see these people here have added things outside of the project area. That's fine too. Um, we want to hear we want to hear what you think about not only the project area, but the little bit outside because it informs it will inform how we think about the whole corridor. So please don't hesitate to use this as well. OK. All right. Um, I'm going to go back to the participant list, make sure nobody's got their hands up. OK. Um, again, next step. So I want to get into a little bit more detail about what the next steps are because um, there's actually a lot that's going to happen between this green check mark and January 2021. Um, again, we're moving to get a concept report finished and to the Planning and Zoning Commission as an information item only by January 2021. So what that means is that, um, I mean, this has actually been amazing 
to have a virtual open house like this. Um, I really appreciate your input. But in addition, um, because it's challenging for us to engage as much with the community, um, we'd like to establish a little community advisory committee. And we and this would be voluntary. And, in, and we're thinking about having six to nine people. And it will include. It will include members. Um, things we've talked about, like it'll we're going to invite the railroad to participate. We're going to invite the um, school district to participate. We're going to invite the cemetery to participate. Um, we're going to have agency meetings. John separately. is now exiting. We're going to have meetings with the agencies separately because there's, you know, technical details that the municipality has to work out with them. But we also think it's important for the community to engage directly with the major landowners that are in your neighborhood, right? Um, so in addition, we'd like to have members of the community council, wink, wink, Steve Beardsley, maybe you can think about who from the council um, would like to participate. Um, there's homeowners associations. If you represent the homeowners association or if you just want to participate. Um, and I imagine it would be one or two meetings where we sit down virtually, sit down virtually and really start talking through the issues in more detail and trying to think about design solutions. Um, so if you are interested in participating, would you please send me an email and let me know that? Um, you can you can also call me. My phone number is on the website if you want to call and talk about it a little bit more. But that's going to be another step that we take between now and finalizing the concept report. We think it's it's important to just get into the details a little bit more. OK. Um, so how to stay involved. Um, all this is going to be documented in part of the report and part of the concept report. You can continue to email me anything you think about. You can call me to ask questions, anything. I'm accessible here for you. Um, OK, who started to share? Let's see, OK. Um, you can't see my screen anymore, can you? We can't see your screen anymore. OK, there it is. All right. OK. So I'm accessible to you all the time. Please don't hesitate to write or call. Um, we will continue to upload. We have quick, easy access to the to the website. We will continue to keep um, keep that updated with documents, meetings. Um, you can um, if continue to participate in the interactive web map if you haven't. And if the questionnaire is also online, so many people have filled it out with the paper that we sent to all of you, which is amazing. Um, but you can also take it online if you haven't taken the questionnaire yet and tell all your neighbors to take it. So that's how you stay involved. Um, sign up for the email list if you haven't. Um, so Aaron is asking, what is the lifespan of the CAC? Um, I do not believe you have to give up the next four years of your life. <laughs> that's not true. Um, I think the life's it's to be determined, but I would anticipate one meeting during the concept report phase and at least one meeting during the design phase. So I would say maybe the next 18 months would be the span of the CAC. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other questions about what happens next? Oh my gosh. None. OK, um, I guess I would like to give municipal staff um, maybe the opportunity to just say any closing thoughts you might want to say. Um, Julie or Melinda. This is Julie. Um, thank you everybody for attending. Um, your input is very valuable. I think Holly, we lost Steve Beardsley before you got that wink wink in. So we might have to reach out to him specifically, but we definitely do want to do a CAC. Like Holly said, it'll probably be about two meetings, maybe up to three. Um, there are certain things we want some input on. 
on the surface, we kind of think this could have been a simple uh, collector road upgrade, but once we talked to Steve Beardsley about a year ago, we realized that this was a pretty complicated project. There's lots of design um, opportunities for our design team to work on, and so we want to make sure we get the full scope of that um, of the issues and where there are opportunities for them to solve if possible. And so um, definitely fill out the map and um, please uh, feel free to volunteer to be on the CAC to help us give us some more input. Um, go ahead, Luke, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just had a, a question about, uh, I know it's on the uh, the community council's high priority list. Where does this fall on the PM and E um, priorities? And secondly, what does the funding and you know just the money available look like for um, you know this project to co come into completion? Um, Melinda, do you want to take that one? Yeah, Luke. This is Melinda. Um, I actually have a, a, a big list of all the project rankings and I'm going to see if I can sort through. OK, I found it. Um, this project from 2020 ranked 14 out of 78 projects, so it's pretty high up there. You know, and that's a process where Gary Jones is our capital improvement program coordinator, he meets with uh, the traffic department and you know various others, the OMB, Lance Wilbur, they all go through and they have uh, scoring criteria to rank these projects and they do it every year. So the 2020 project list showed it as number 14. Um, as far as the funding, I, that's a good opportunity for me to kind of again explain what's shown in there right now is just placeholder money, you know, we don't really know until we delve further into the project and get some more clarity on on you know what uh, the construction estimate is going to be so as as the project develops and moves forward we will refine those numbers and we'll know more and then we can keep um, advocating and uh, allocating funding um, so that's where we are currently so i wouldn't you know even though it shows 3.6 3.6 we don't know. One thing I do want to share, though, is it is difficult in our um, capital improvement program to get a, a very large project um, under one year. So, you know, if, if it shows that this project's going to be, um, you know, $8 million construction value, which it, it probably won't be that high, but if it does, you know, that, that becomes a a topic of do we split it into phases, for instance? Do we do one half one year and another half another year? Or do we just accumulate funds or do we just program for that high value amount? Um, but um, it's it's a it's an ongoing conversation that PME has in our capital program um, as far as looking at funding and, and the priority of the projects. But it, it looks pretty like you got high priority for now. Yeah, so, thanks. Can I just follow up yep. just real quick with that? Um, yep. Yes. So, um, okay. One second. I really like the the suggestion to you know like in the meantime we can clear the trees and other things. Maybe there's some minor things we could do, you know, so we're not four years out before we maybe get a crosswalk light or something like that. I would um, think that that would be a, a good thing. But and then. I just blanked on what I was going to ask. Um, is there, oh yeah, is there anything that the community members can do to help, uh, you know, push the project forward and other than just like volunteer and other things? This is Julie. Most definitely um, keep after your assembly members, the administration, there is a massive amount of there's a lot of projects out there competing for the same pot of money and it's um, we have emergency projects that come up obviously and things like that and so other projects get pushed so keep after your assembly members and um, we're a little bit hesitant to spend money on something that we would have to basically dig up in a couple years and replace and so um, unless we know there's a specific um, immediate 
um, safety concern, um, life and safety concern. I don't know if we would do too much in advance, um, but it's we would some of this would be flushed out in the traffic analysis. We'll look at traffic data, um, crash data, and things like that. Sure. Thanks. Okay, there was a question in the chat from John Cruz, and I want to bring this up, and maybe a municipal staff person can address it. Um, is there any thought of making 120th not be a collector road and sending the traffic through the controlled intersection at Clat Road? Um, I guess this is, go ahead, Julie, it's talking to the process of maybe changing the the streets and highways plan. Is that what that would do? It would be? Well, it was recently within the about last five, five to seven years changed from a local roadway to a collector and it was changed to a collector based on the traffic volume and how it's performing and it's performing as a collector taking traffic from neighborhood roads and commuting it to arterials and so I don't foresee change downgrading the classification back to a neighborhood road the road is acting as a collector okay thank you for that question John Okay, are there any final questions or comments? Um, I just wanna say thank you for participating and thank you for making this really productive. Um, it's been challenging for us to figure out how to gather as much information as possible the, the way we used to, and I feel like we're doing it and I appreciate everybody for participating, thank you. Um, I have a question. I'm not sure if it's too late to ask. No, it's not. That's why I dilly dally a little bit. Excellent. Sorry, I, my phone, I've been in and out trying to finish up a project while listening into the meeting. Um, I live right on East 120th, and I have a couple of concerns, and some of my neighbors, we've all talked, to, talked about them, like living right on the street. And I'm not sure. I was just going to ask a few questions. I'm not sure if they were already highlighted. Um, many of us, we, we noticed the issue with speeding right on East 120th and we didn't know if, um, speed bumps were considered for the road. Um, it, we don't know, but it could be a possibility. Um, Melinda, you came off mute. Go ahead. Oh, well, um, so for a neighborhood collector that can, we could put devices in there such as vertical devices like a speed hump or a, a tabletop or speed cushion. So being a lower classified road, you can put those devices on so that it, it is something we could look at. OK, but another uh, question. OK, go ahead. Yeah, one other question we had, and I just wasn't yeah. sure if it was already voiced yet. Um, myself and about our my eight other neighbors that are east of Division Street on East 120th, um, us that live directly on East 120th, none of us actually have city um, water or sewer. Mm -hmm. And we're wondering if they're considering putting sidewalks on our side of the road or just digging up and redoing the whole roadway, if there would be consideration for putting uh, water utilities in at that point, if they were already gonna tear the whole road up. So we did we did hear that from another homeowner, another meeting participant, and um, the municipality will contact AWU and see what AWU has planned for that area now that we know that. Because Julie said before, like, we don't want to rip things up a bunch of times. The, the city doesn't want to do that. So um, they'll investigate the situation as, as part of the process. Awesome. Okay. The one thing that's good is if there's if there's a majority of properties within a district that is interested in water and sewer, you guys can form a water improvement or and a sewer improvement district and it goes on a majority vote. So if you have eight of you, you know, and, and five of you decide that you want it within a district, you know, that's what can push it forward. But if there's eight of you that are all interested, again, that's even that that's even more uh, 
uh, workable as far as getting it moved forward from AWW. Excellent. Okay. Um, and one other consideration, I guess, when it comes to the sidewalks being on one side of the road or on both, um, many of me and my neighbors that live right here on East 120th, um, our yards are already, our, most of our houses built back in the day were already very close to the roadway. If they do build a, go ahead and take the easement and put the sidewalk, I mean, our houses are going to be 20 feet from the sidewalk or closer. Um, so that's kind of a concern for some of us too, being so close to the street and to the, the roadway. And so um, just living right here and noticing, I, obviously a lot of people end up walking on our side of the road, but that's because we have mowed lawns. And on the other side, you have overgrowth and trees. But if it was put on the other side, I feel like it's a much safer um, side to have the sidewalk on if you're only gonna have one, because you only have the one street to the east of us on the other side of the railroad tracks and you have one little access point for the cemetery and then you have the school on the other side of the road you have nine or more private drives and then division street which is the the most busy side street on east 120th with most of the traffic so it was just a thought of mine if you're going to have one sidewalk it i think it'd be best to be on the north side just for people for us residents that live right here and what we see every day with people walking and with the traffic and with the school Okay, thank you very much. Of course, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for, I know you had a lot going on, but thanks for chiming in, calling in a couple times to participate. Thank you. Oh yeah, and thank you so much for putting this on. We're all very concerned with what's gonna happen, especially us that live right on the street. Yep. <laughs> cool. All right, everyone. Um, I appreciate, again, I appreciate it so much. Um, if you, Think of anything else, don't hesitate to reach out. We're here, okay? And I also wanna thank everybody too. This is Melinda. These are really valuable comments. Um, it's so worthwhile having this meeting. We gained so much and, you know, even just hearing both sides and, and uh, perspectives of, you know, what you think would be better on one side versus the other side. There's all these considerations that will be helpful as we move forward. So thanks for your time and for sharing and um, communicating and reaching, re you know, joining us tonight. And Holly and Michelle, thanks for putting together a great virtual meeting. Uh, this works. So good job, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Signing off. Thank Go you ahead. so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Unknown participant is now exiting. That was good. Yeah, I think we still have one person on the phone. Let's see. Okay. Joe so Julie. Austin. Julie, before He's you now exiting, yeah, hold on just, I'm just going to stop recording first. Hold on. I just need to remember how to do it. Uh, stop recording.